this set up here. Hello. Hmm. Hello, everyone. I'm here live on doing both Facebook and Instagram. We'll see how that works. Yeah, I'm so good to be here with you. Let's get everything on the screen so we can see you. I am a homna and I'm going to be streaming live, sharing a little story today. But first, I wanted to just say hello to everyone who is here with me live. And for those of you who will be watching this via the replay, if you are watching it through the replay, leave a comment, hashtag soulful luxury in the comments below so that I know you're here with me on the replay. For those of you who are here with me live, say hello and let me know where you are streaming this video at today in the world. I also wanted to share with you that I am going to be doing a drawing and gifting someone either a copy of my book or if you already have a copy of my book, a copy of a um, auricular experience, a sound journey that I created. And you can enter into this drawing by sharing this live video to your audience and then commenting in the chat that you have shared the video so that my assistant can add you into the drawing. And I will draw the name from today on my next live video later this week. Hello, Luna Bell. And let's see who's here on Facebook, if I can find it, I don't think I can right now. That's all right. So I wanted to come in and share a story with you all. And the story is from three years ago, when I had just soul braided, walked into this body. And a little bit about that experience and just give you a backstory for those of you who don't know my journey as a walk-in. I celebrated into this body four years ago now in November of 2019. Or is it 2018? I think it was 2019. Time here is so weird. And in that period, when I celebrated with the density one soul that was in this body, we had a very clear agreement that she needed to bardo, which is exit completely exit from this body by December of 2020. And that was because in the beginning of 2021, me at home now was going to be taking on an accelerated role for the planetary Templar. And basically when you soul braid, when this, if this is a part of someone's hologram, right? And this is a contract that you have before you've come in here. When you soul braid, the, soul that's coming in has an agreement with the soul that is in the body to basically help them to rapidly transmute, transcend, heal their trauma and their karma with this world that they would normally spend an entire lifetime healing and clearing and transforming in a specific time period. Normally that specific time period is anywhere from two, which is really fast, to seven years. Now, a lot of soul braids that I've been talking to are actually well past their seven year and they're still soul braided. And, you know, it, it just speaks to the complexities that we have happening in this world right now, where, you know, if there are more familial attachments or children in the person's lives, then it can be harder for that density one soul to feel complete here and to transition out. Now, <clears throat> back to the story of my experience here like we knew very clearly jessica and i that there was a, a timeline and we both devoted to doing really difficult work together to help her get from where she was to a point where she felt ready clear and like aligned to exit out of this body and in 2020, we really devoted to going all in on healing all of the trauma and karma of this world. And the experience that I want to share with you about today is actually when we got to this point of 
through Network Spinal Care, I had a team of people, of facilitators, of healers helping me because this was something that we could not do alone. It required the help of my partner, Alex, who was a huge, just so big, like such a huge role. Like I could not have done this without him, which is why we even are together. And also um, network spinal healers and my acupuncturist and other different neurological specialists that I worked with throughout this period of from 2020, really and still until this year, we're still kind of getting the body back into um, its next octave because of the blood, which is another conversation. That being said, in um, 2020, we were starting to unlock the deeper layers of trauma surrounding the energy of anger and the energy of fire. And throughout someone's life, they will slowly bring up the anger that is inside of them. Usually there are extreme cases where someone has a serious blood issue and they need to rapidly start, they rapidly start to burn through their yin and that, that energy can come up. And this is when, you know, a lot of times people will become violent and, um, you know, if they have deficiencies in their body, they can become violent and they will then be very aggressive with that anger energy. Most people though, have a long time, lifetime timeline to slowly bring about the energy of fire into their body to transmute and transcend and to evolve into a higher order of spirit because fire brings us into spirit. It brings us into the etheric realms. So with that being said, our journey in 2020 was like a lifetime of fire energy needing to come up in a very short period of time over a month. And what that meant was that the entire lifetime of anger that was inside of this body and that was associated with the soul in her lifetimes of really, I mean, she was trapped here in this artificial matrix since the fall of Tara. I mean, it was a very long time that she had been a slave for this AI machine. And there was so much, so much pain and anger and just so much trauma that she was holding in her body. And I have so much compassion for it because I lived it with her for several years. So through that process, we began to bring up the anger that was there and to bubble it up very, very quickly because that was our agreement. And the anger was so powerful, so much of it. It was so difficult to hold in this body. And no matter what tool or practice that I did from this world, like EFT, the emotion code, network, acupuncture, all these different modalities. Um, I was working with different brain training devices, like all the different tools and resources that you could possibly imagine to help process emotions, like I was doing. <laughs> and um None of it was working because this, all those tools are basically designed to help someone with the, the like average, we'll say amount of anger that will come up for someone. And that anger still is like an extreme feeling when it happens. I'm talking about now compound that and imagine that was like a drop of the bucket of anger that is available to someone to process in their lifetime, all happening at once. And what ended up happening was that I needed to get a practice and a tool that had never been before on the planet. So I worked with my team on the guardian plane of non-physical beings. I was working with my physical team of allies and healers. And then I was working with my guardian team of allies and healers and master teachers. And I was like, I need help. I, I don't know how to run this energy through my body in a way that will 
not destroy me because if you run too much fire through your body, what ends up happening is that fire energy will burn the yin energy in your body. And when the yin energy in your body becomes depleted, like it really messes with your hormones. It messes with your ability to relax and to be at ease and to be receptive. It messes with how your organs can function and especially your yin organs and your liver is a yin organ. So when you start to burn out the yin energy in your body, then if your liver starts to struggle, right, this is super problematic because our liver is 100% essential to keep our body detoxed and cleansed specifically of anger. So anger can actually really burn out the yin energy of the body. And then the hormonal imbalances can be very difficult to overcome at that point. And then the extreme cases, it starts to burn out the yin of the blood, the blood becomes deficient, and then it becomes very, very difficult. So having too much fire in the body is a very, it has to be a very delicate nature because of what happens when fire is unleashed and how it can burn up the yin energy of the body that the body needs to maintain balance with. So it was a delicate dance of how do I do this? unleash all this fire, unleash all this anger and not completely deplete the body of yin and also not destroy all the relationships around me because at this time there was just fire raging in every single direction. And so I received this practice called synoptic transpositioning from my team of guardians that basically would help me to go through the process in a safe and sacred way of unlocking anger. And they taught me the complete wave that needs to happen from point A to point B to get you from the essence of safety and security, your yin energy, to the unlocking fully of the fire, of the anger, and then back down to a space of neutrality, safety, and security again. And this practice was so profound, so powerful. I ended up doing it every single day for two weeks. And in two weeks, I burned through a lifetime of anger in this body and got to a space where I truly, like anger and I have created such a beautiful relationship with each other now because I have willingly, a lot of people deny anger, right? It's been taught to deny this anger, deny this fire, deny this aspect, deny spirit, right? All these ways that we've been told to actually deny this energy. And I, in so many ways, proved myself to this energy that I was willing to be a, you know, an emissary for its wisdom and for its, um, transformational powers because that's ultimately what fire does it transforms it transforms us into a higher spiritual order and through this i developed a very beautiful friendship with anger in a way that it now trusts me and it has revealed certain things to me about what it actually is in the body, what it is actually for, which I've shared about in some of my previous posts about how it actually reveals the areas of our lives that are holding us back from our next highest timeline. And it's actually the perfect mechanism for showing us where exactly in our lives we need to address and change. And if we do not deny it, we can actually very quickly evolve and grow in our, in our reality. What it also did was it allowed me to hold a deeper space for people. I have since put these tools that I received from my team into a program called Holy Fire, which is actually opening up again in two days on the 11th. And it's a seven day journey through these practices that I received to help us to masterfully process and integrate the fire element in our body. And what I've learned really through this entire walk-in process is that as a facilitator, as a, as a healer, as a guide, as a coach, as a mentor, we can only take our clients as deep as we have gone ourselves. So what has naturally happened since 2020 is that when people come to 
to our home and have an in-person experience with myself, I the first thing that I always say to them is that all of you is welcome here. And then I have to actually like stress what that means because people are maybe used to hearing that. And the truth of the matter is, is that when someone says that to you, what they actually mean is that all of you that I can personally hold space for, because I've held space for that myself, I'm available for. And what then happens is that whoever you are, you know, working with to facilitate transformation for you, you will be locked in the energy that you can actually bring up with them. And you will only be able to bring up the energy with them that they have personally processed themselves. So they literally can only take you as deep as you have gone yourself. So what this experience has allowed me to step into was this ability to take people to the edge of existence with the fire element and to very quickly rapidly transform this energy if they are truly devoted and especially if they are in person with me in person we can burn through things in 48 hours that you will spend a lifetime working with otherwise and i have seen this and proven this time and time again when people come make the trip to the land and actually get in person with me and that is because of what I have gone through and what is in my fields capable to navigate through. And in experiences now, like when we had the large retreat on our land a year ago, we had 34 people here and a couple people left early. And I'm going to share a little bit about that actually here today. Um, we went through this process of synoptic transpositioning with this 30 something group of people, 33, 34 at the time. And afterwards our chef was like, you know, everyone is just like going into it. And like this, this technique is just so powerful to get the unlocked trapped fire energy that is wreaking havoc on the body being trapped there to awaken to come up to the surface in a way that is safe for the nervous system to do so. There are very clear steps to take to do this so that we are not burning the body's yin energy and so that we are not re-traumatizing ourselves. And in this, in this practice, everyone is like, we're releasing this really powerful rage. And our chef came to us, came to me afterwards, and she was like, are you okay? Like, how is that holding that for you? And I was in my absolute joy. I was in my absolute bliss because of the relationship that I have now developed with the fire element, with anger, with rage, with these energies that many people, you know, push away. And I've welcomed them fully in is that I have learned through anger that what anger and rage and hatred and blame and shame and all these energies that are woven into that dynamic of fire transformational change is they need to have someone lovingly witness them in order for them to actually transcend and spiral up. And that's the role that I can play now because I have done that for myself in a really intense and difficult way. And that is what's available now. And not everyone I realized can actually hold space for that, which is why, you know, the work that I do is not being seen by hundreds of millions of people because it is deep, because it is profound. And I'm okay with that because I know that the people who are actually ready to show up and do the work are going to show up and do the work. They're going to honor the call that they feel to come to the land or to jump into one of my programs that are specifically towards healing. You know, I have programs that aren't about necessarily healing. I have the quantum money community. That's not about healing. That's about expansion and, and you know, playing in this realm of wealth creation. And then I have very deep alchemical programs to heal and transform people's lives that I've developed through my own process of being this walk-in and this navigating this journey that has been very difficult and profound. And within that, because of that now, what happens in the field is so 
beautiful to witness. Like for me, it is so uplifting to witness someone finally feel safe to let go of this toxicity of fire that has been in their body. And I say fire itself is not toxic. What happens is, is that fire gets stuck in the body because people have not been taught how to run fire efficiently through their bodies. And because It has such a chaotic nature to it when it works through the nervous system. People have actually been taught to like try to cage fire or put water on it to try to sizzle it out. But what that fire actually does is it goes and hides in organs where it can like stir up stuff, where it can stir up stuff, where it's, it can start to bubble up inside the body and it creates acidity right acidosis of the body it creates stress stress is heat stress is inflammation inflammation is excess heat this is all fire energy like most people have too much fire energy burning up the yin of their body their body cannot recover they're now dealing with chronic inflammation chronic acidity chronic stress and all the byproducts that naturally happen as a result of that so depending on what organ of the body that fire builds in, it will manifest with a different symptomology. So if fire gets stuck in the heart space, then it's going to manifest as anxiety. When it gets to the extreme and it starts influencing the blood, it will then start to manifest as panic. If fire gets stuck in the liver or the gallbladder, It's going to manifest an excessive amount of anger and rage, and it will also manifest depression because the liver and gallbladder are responsible for happiness and joy. And when that energy gets burned up by too much fire, then we feel the depression, right? That's why people, when they do a liver or a gallbladder detox, they often feel if they've had depression, like their depression is lifted for a period of time. Now, a lot of times that it's so deeply embedded because this energy for most people is suppressed in childhood. So if you're in an adult body and you have had energy like this suppressed in these organs for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, you know, how many ever years it has been that your body has been alive on this planet, then one three-day liver detox is not going to cut it to actually get you to the point where you are no longer recapitulating the depressive energy, right? So if the fire energy starts to burn the chi of the lungs, this is when grief and sadness that, you know, perpetuates and an inability to actually process the grief often shows up in this space. So it really depends on where that energy gets stuck in the body. If it gets stuck around the spleen, right? We're gonna have a lot of worry, and that worry, if it grows to the extreme and, it, and, and that fire starts to drain the blood in this situation and it's impacting the spleen, then that worry can turn into like, um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for here? Paranoia, right? Where it's just like such extreme worry that you become paranoid. So these are all the ways that the fire energy becomes toxic in our body because we didn't learn how to efficiently work with this energy in our bodies, excuse me. <clears throat> so what we're doing when we actually go through the process of holy fire is we learn how to work and move and process the energy of fire in our body in a way that is actually going to create an intentional result, which is to burn through the fire, right? If you think about a forest fire. Forest fires are a very natural phenomenon. When I was in living in Montana, I spent some time in the glacier with a park ranger and I was having discussion with this park ranger. We were on a very long, like 10 mile hike and we were talking about the fires because when I was living in Montana, there was pretty massive fires around the area that I was in Whitefish, which is right outside of the Glacier National Park area. And there was huge fires that were happening in that region at the time. And, 
you know, we were just dialoguing and he was, he was educating me about how the specific type of, of pine that were in that forest, they needed fire in order to actually create new trees. The seed, the pine cones needed fire to actually open up and release the seed and that the fire will naturally burn itself out once it's allowed to run. So what a lot of people will do then is that they will try to contain the fire into a certain area. And in the national parks, they actually try to let the fire, to, they'll direct it a little bit, but they will let that fire naturally continue to burn until it has burned itself out because that's what fire needs. It needs a safe space where it can burn until it has burned itself out. When it gets contained into a localized area and people are putting it out with water, it actually wants to come back even stronger because it has not been able to do what it came to do, which is to destroy something and to transform that something into spirit, into an etheric experience. Right. So this is why it's so important to actually learn how to work and run the energy inside of your body and why I put everything that I learned through this experience of my own inner fires into this seven day immersion with holy fire that happens online. And, you know, people want to do the really deep, deep alchemical work with me in person and you have to send me a message and we can discuss what that looks like. That happens in South Carolina only because my home is set up for this. We have tremendous equipments and healings and all the different dynamics that happen here. That being said, traveling for everyone is not necessarily always an option. And there is online versions of this as well. And the online version is the Holy Fire experience that is seven days of learning how this energy works in your body, learning how to work through the energy of fire, learning how to safely unlock trapped fire that has been in your body, causing inflammation, causing stress, causing acidity, causing, you know, depressed depression energies, causing uh, an inability to process grief, causing anxiety, causing panic, causing all these different things when it really starts to grow. And in the beginning, it just feels like this unsettledness in your body before it gets to the point and I, I, I love for people to start to process it when it feels unsettled, because once it gets to the point of anxiety and panic and all these other energies, like it, it's really difficult to live in that. And I know that because I spent two years in extreme panic where, you know, I wasn't even able to leave my house for a good deal of that time during this process of doing this really deep work. Like it was very challenging for me to go out into the world. So I know what it feels like to live with these extreme energies and how difficult that can be. And, you know, my goal is to help as many people as possible to mitigate having to go to the extremes when the blood becomes efficient and the spirit starts to detach. And, you know, I have a whole chunk of videos that are going to be coming out really about the blood because this is, this is really the most important thing that is, um, to be understood for where we're at on the planet and how we're here to have an evolution. Um, our blood is so deeply involved in this process. That being said, um, yeah, this, this seven day experience, you know, we begin again on the 11th that's opening up for people to join. If you want to join us and in coming into actually learning how to work this energy in your body, it is, is life changing to have these tools so that you don't have to get to that point where it gets to the extreme because you know how to now work with this energy in your body and to see it as an ally and not something to be afraid of. Most people are actually afraid of the fire element when it becomes alive in their body. And I know this because I've worked with thousands of people around the world now from all different cultures, all different age ranges, from children to people who are elderly. And when the fire energy starts to open up inside of their body, there is a desire for it to stop. And that desire for it to stop is because there is fear of it, because they don't understand it. They don't understand what it is and what is actually for and how to properly run it in our body because we were never taught how to do this. So now we get to learn so that now we can stop being afraid of the very thing that is going to evolve our human species into a higher spiritual order. 
we have to burn in order to evolve into the spiritual human that we are knowing we're here to evolve into, because that is the element that allows us to actually open up to the etheric realm. So it is really a non-negotiable at this point in time, anyone who is wanting to actually heal and grow and evolve and, and, and spiritually mature as a human is going to have to learn how to work the element of fire inside of their body. And to, um, for me, I found that the more that I understand something and I understand the purpose and the meaning behind it, especially things that are very difficult. And the path of, of, of walking into this body, you know, I just can't, I don't even have words for how challenging that was. It has altered and changed the core fabric of who this body is. And it has done so for the better. <laughs> And within that, what was I saying? I just, I just felt a lot of emotion and I think I lost track of what I was saying. Anyways. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So basically this, this period that we're on, right. And this moment of time on the planet, like the change and transformation. Okay. Now I remember what I was saying is that for me, when I understand the purpose of something, it helps me to actually lean into it. When, when it, especially when it's difficult. If I don't understand the purpose and the meaning behind why something it needs to be so extremely felt in my body, it is really hard for me to actually just surrender to it, which is what we have to do in those moments when things get extreme in our body, extreme pain and suffering and like, I know a lot of people want the pleasure and the blissful path. And, and, you know, for me, it's all about not actually choosing either, not actually getting attached to the pleasure and not actually getting attached to the pain, which is, which is where Jessica went. She was attached to the pain and it, it took a long time to actually sober up this body from its addiction to pain and to get to a space now where it experiences extreme bliss and it still experiences extreme pain and in either side of the spectrum the goal is always to get back to the neutrality and the peace within it all and that that meaning like understanding the purpose of fire understanding the purpose of anger and rage and understanding the purpose of why things have to happen a certain way which that purpose is actually described in our meridians. It's described in the elements, which is why I love educating people on the meridians, because once you understand that your meridians are creating everything for you, then you can learn specifically about them and how they're creating different things. And then you know why it's showing up in a certain way. And then you also know how to spiral up into a new frequency in that space. I mean, it's really masterful. It's just like, it's, you know, it's everything. So I'm going to wrap this up now because I think that it is, yep, it's 1130 here my time and I've got to go prepare myself for a call. If you are interested in jumping into Holy Fire, I'd love for you to join. The link, if you're on Instagram, is in my bio link tree. You can also send me a message you're on Facebook and you'd like the link, you can just go to my wall, it's there, or you can send me a message as well. I hope that this talk has provided some value and I hope that I will see some of you inside of Holy Fire. This is a program that's always open. That being said, I am going to be facilitating it for these seven days. So you'll actually be able to have my support in this journey going through it. That isn't always happening for people who go through this, this process. So I hope to see some of you inside and I hope that you all have found some value in this transmission today, sending you lots of love and I will see you again soon. And make sure that for those of you who missed the beginning, if you share this video, you will be entered into a drawing to win something special from me the next time I go live. So share this video and then comment on the post. I've shared it so that my assistant can put your name into the drawing that I will draw later this week. Sending you all lots of love and I will see you next time. And...